Good morning, everybody. Um, yesterday, we had so many technical difficulties that it was hard to get everything we needed in lecture-wise, and I don't, unfortunately, have time to go back on Monday and share that uh, lecture with you all. So I'm going to record a little video here. You need to watch that. Hopefully, you already got the notes. If you didn't get the notes, you need to make sure that you're filling those in. So yesterday, we were supposed to talk about the political spectrum and the electoral college. So I'm going to start with the political spectrum. And when we look at the political spectrum in your note packet, it is a line, okay? I just did arrows in this instance. Um, but when we look at it, we see the liberals and the Democrats on the left and the conservative and the Republicans on the right. In the middle is your moderate independents. Um, and we're going to kind of talk about where everybody lines up with what their beliefs are, okay? So let's start with the conservative and Republican first. So before I go into this, um, you know, you can identify as a Democrat or Republican and possibly differ on one or two issues. If you start differing on more than one or two issues, that is when you are going to be a little bit more independent or moderate in the middle because um, moderate is just a little bit from the Democrat, a little bit from the Republican, and you meet in the middle, okay? But back to Republican, um, we are going to have individuals um, who believe in pro-life, so they believe in, they are anti-abortion. Uh, we also, um, people who are Republicans also uh, believe in Second Amendment rights, so they're not so much for gun control. They maybe tend to worry a little bit more about their Second Amendment rights um, being infringed upon. They're anti-state welfare, so they don't necessarily believe that uh, states should be providing aid to the poor. Then they're also in, want to instigate immigration restrictions. So if you look at what happened with Mexico and the wall, the wall was built, or part of the wall has been built. The other part is supposedly going up. They're anti-same-sex marriage, so they believe that uh, marriage should be between a man and a woman anti-union, so they don't really necessarily think that, you know, workers should mobilize to demand better rights, and they for, are for a flat tax, meaning that everyone should be taxed at the same rate, okay? So um, some known Republicans, conservative Republican presidents are going to be Dwight Eisenhower, who was a World War II um, hero and then will become president and serve for eight years. Richard Nixon, who was elected in 1968 and 1972. A lot of people think that Nixon was one of the presidents to be impeached, but he was not. He resigned before he was impeached. Um, Ronald Reagan served two terms in the 80s. George H.W. Bush served one term. George W. Bush served uh, two terms. He was president during 9-11. And then our current president, Donald Trump. Okay. So on the other side of the spectrum, or the opposite side, because they believe in opposite things, are our liberal Democrats. And these individuals believe in pro-choice, so they believe in a woman's right to choose um, with regards to abortion. They are pro-gun control, so they believe that more laws should be um, issued to deal with gun violence. They're also pro-welfare. And um, they believe in the dreamers, okay? So the dreamers is this idea that you come to this country um, to make a better life for yourself, and um, they want to, you know, support that. They also believe in universal health care as opposed to private health care. LGBTQ rights, they're pro-union, so they believe that unions should be able to um, organize, and they also believe in progressive taxes, meaning that you should tax people based on the amount of money that they make. So if you make more money, you are going to um, pay more taxes, okay? So some of our well-known uh, Democrats are going to be Franklin Roosevelt, who served during World War II. He will actually be elected to four terms. JFK, um, who was one of our presidents who was assassinated. Barack Obama served two terms, elected in 2008 and 2012. Clinton, who is one of those presidents who was impeached, um, he will serve two terms as well. He was found non-guilty in the Senate. Jimmy Carter will only serve one term, and then Lyndon Johnson um, will finish out JFK's term, and he is elected to one of his own terms, okay? He could have ran again, but he chose not to. So you can kind of see the difference. Um, and, you know, someone can be a liberal Democrat, and like I said, 
maybe not be pro gun control or not be pro union. So it's just it's a matter of you can be really liberal or you can be somewhat liberal. So you would fall between liberal and moderate. You can be really conservative or you can be somewhat conservative and fall between moderate and conservative. So if you have any questions on the political spectrum, please make sure that you let me know about that, okay? All right, so now we are going to move on to the Electoral College. So the Electoral College is how we elect our president. So we do not go just by popular vote. Um, so when we look at this, we're going to look at how we get to where we get a president. So first off, electors are going to be the individuals who actually vote for the president and vice president. People in the states vote for who they want, but electors actually cast the vote. Um, the 2020 census, and a census is just a population count that's taken every 10 years. So we just had one in 2020, and it determines the number of representatives that each state will have in the U.S. House. Uh, this number helps to determine the number of electors for each state as well. So let's take a look at the Electoral College in um, 2016 with Clinton and Trump. So there are 538 electors, and that is the same number of electors that are in the whole Congress, so the Senate and the House of Representatives. So you can see Trump had 306 votes, Clinton had 232 votes. And what's interesting is when campaigning occurs, you can see the number of electoral votes that every state gets. So your big states are going to be California with 55, Texas with 38, New York with 29, Florida with 29, Pennsylvania with 20, uh, Illinois with 20. So all of these states, um, you know, they're going to hold your biggest number of votes. So, for example, California. California is most likely always going to be a blue state, meaning that they're always going to vote Democratic. So you're not going to see Donald Trump campaigning in California. You probably won't even see Biden campaigning in California because he knows that he can already count on that state. Texas is usually a red state, so uh, you won't see a lot of campaigning going on there as well. Uh, New York is a blue state. And then we have those states that are swing states, so states like Ohio, Florida, uh, North Carolina, Michigan, and I'm trying to think what the other one is another swing state, Virginia. Um, those are states that don't really have a history of voting one way or the other, Democratic and Republican. They can go either way. So for example, in 2016, Ohio voted for Trump, but in 2008 and 2012, Ohio voted for Obama. And a little fun fact is that no state has ever, no president has ever, since 1968, the president who won the office of the presidency won Ohio. So no president has won the presidency without winning Ohio since I think 1968. So Ohio is a really important swing state. Historically, Ohio is a very Republican state. Um, Lucas County, where we live, is a very Democratic county. All right. So you kind of have to take that all into account. So next week, Trump is coming to Ohio to campaign. Um, he's going to have a stop at the airport. I think you will also see Biden coming to Ohio quite a bit between now and uh, November, I think it's the second when the election um, happens. Let me see. No, the fourth. Maybe it's the fourth. Okay. So, no, it's a Tuesday. So it's, this, it's the third, November 3rd. So that is kind of how the electoral map plays out. Okay. And you can see here that Trump had 306, Clinton had 232. Um, what's interesting is that you can win the presidency in the Electoral College without winning the majority vote. So in 2016, Clinton won the majority vote. The majority of the people in this country voted for her, but because we have the Electoral College, Trump was the victor. And the reason that the Electoral College was created was because when our country was first created, we wanted to ensure that states would be equally represented. All right, so how do you get your number of electoral um, electorates. So you take your state electors, that equals the number of senators. So every state has two senators, okay? And you add that to the number of representatives that are given to that state, and you get your number of state electors. So for example, Ohio has two senators, okay? And we have 18 electoral votes. So 
If you take 18 minus 2, you get 16, and we know that that's the number of representatives in the House for Ohio is 16. So 18 total electors. And Ohio's population has gone down in recent years. I can remember when Ohio had 20 electors, had 22 electors. So um, it, it does change with that census. And like I said, there are 538 total electors. So how do you become an elector? Well, electors are appointed by state legislatures, and electors must be loyal party members. They don't want individuals going rogue and voting for the opposite party. Any eligible voter can become an elector. You could become an elector when you're 18. I could apply to be an elector. Electors have certain things that they are not allowed to do. So they cannot hold any other political office. They cannot be a governor. They cannot be a senator. They cannot be a representative. You do not get paid to be an elector. You hold a regular job. So electors are daily people like a teacher, a doctor, a factory worker, um, someone who works at a department store. And electors' names appear on the ballot under the candidate that they will vote for. So, uh, voting occurs after the general election. So, the general election begins uh, that first week of November. So, after that, the electors will meet um, at the state capitol, and they will cast their ballots for who they want that state's um, to get their electoral votes. Electors can vote for whoever they want. There are a few states where you can split the electors. I know that Maine is one of them. Um, and I want to say Nebraska maybe, but I know for sure that Maine is one of them. So a joint session of Congress convenes after the election to count the electoral votes and announce the winner. There are a couple of amendments. Uh, the 23rd Amendment gave the District of Columbia three electors, um, and that added up to 538 because the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C., where all of our government is, isn't necessarily a state, but they, you know, the government felt that they should be represented since we have a decent amount of population there, and that is kind of the hubbub of our of our whole government. So the 12th Amendment said the electors will vote once for president and once for vice president to ensure that um, everyone, it'll all come out evenly voted and to make sure that we had two candidates from the same party and not candidates from different parties. So Biden and Harris are running out of ticket. Trump and Pence are running out of ticket. If you if say Ohio goes to Biden, you would vote for Biden and you would vote for Harris for vice president. Also remember if there is a tie in the House or if there is a tie in the Electoral College, the House of Representatives will be the tiebreaker. All right, so here's a couple of questions. True or false? There are 538 electors. So take about three seconds. That is true. Okay, the number of representatives and senators. And the way electors vote for the president and the vice president was changed by the 13th Amendment. That is false. If you go back, remember the 12th Amendment did that. Okay? So there are some links for study if you have questions um, with regards to um, the Electoral College. So that was kind of everything in a nutshell. Um, if you have questions, please comment, email, do what you need to do. I am here to help you. Um, please let me know. So have a great weekend. Come back on Monday. We're going to look at the Declaration of Independence and our current government. All right, so I will talk to you then. Bye-bye.